Hello, The Pulse by Senaiza. How are you? We are here in Mumbai, India, for the first ever Lollapalooza to be held here. Um, we arrived yesterday and today's the festival. We're here a good four hours before our slot. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a kind of diary of the day, showing you the processes that we go through, the checks that we kind of have to do in preparing for a festival, the way that we fly our gear, um, and generally just sort of all the checks and general things that you need to kind of get right on a festival because they obviously are different from a regular show where you would sort of load in and have the venue all day. This is a little bit different where you have a 45 minute changeover. So we want to check as much before as we possibly can. And then we will push on and do a line check for 45 minutes and then you're straight into the show. So I'm going to just go through how we do that and the process that we kind of follow and some little things that we do to make all that go a bit smoother the way that we bring equipment into the country which equipment we hire to try and make things go as smooth as possible um, so I hope you enjoy it so the first thing I do coming to a festival any festival uh, but especially one abroad is obviously you find out what equipment they have at the festival. So I use Digico consoles. And the reason I use Digico is that they, the shows are, it doesn't matter which console you're using, you can use a converter to make your show file work on any of the consoles. So today, for example, I'm using a 338. I've not used one before. Um, I can take an SD12 or a 10 file, convert it to a 338. And then I actually went up to Adlib in Liverpool and prepped the show to make sure everything was working all right. Uh, so I know in confidence that when I get to India and plug in my show key, I've advanced and made sure all the software versions are the same so that I know when I plug my show file in, it's going to come up on the desk. Then it's just a matter of patching and assigning outputs, inputs, that kind of thing. So there's a certain amount of prep that you need to do. So it's called an advance. So once you get an advance from the festival, it will tell you what equipment they are supplying to you. If it's something that's different from what you'd normally use, if you then have a budget um, or some negotiating powers, I guess, um, you could try and spec the equipment that you would prefer to use. So in this scenario, I had a, there's um, an SD10 over there that I could have used, but they just offered to get this one in. So it's mine for the day, which is great. I'm really appreciative of that. It gives me lots of time to make sure everything's right. But if I were using the 10, then I would, um, I would have had 30 minutes this morning to prep the console. And then obviously just the 45 minutes and changeover to get the show going and make sure everything works. The same with the front of house, um, that was a Digico, but that front of house guy uses Avid. So he asked for an Avid and after a bit of backwards and forwards um, they supplied an Avid. So he's happy, he knows that his show is going to be good on that because he's got a good show file. Um, and then when it comes to backline, we don't use amplifiers for guitars anymore, or bass guitars. We don't have um, any amplifiers or cabs. We moved across to Kempers for situations just like this. So they're guitar modulators. So we can fit those in Pelican cases and fly them all around the world. Our playback system again is just two laptops that fits in a Pelican case. And then we have a, the playback system. Uh, which is a couple of a few preamps, eight preamps, um, out, and an, an output card. Again, fits into a, a for you rack and fits in a Pelican case. We bring our own microphones, um, so that way we have got a constant. So we know that all the playback and all the guitars will always sound the same. The bass will always sound the same. The only thing we we bring all our own Sennheiser microphones so that we know the characteristics of what things will sound like, uh, vocals and drums. So the only thing we actually hire when we come abroad is, um, is a drum kit. Um, that way we are making the show as consistent as we possibly can. Um, we fly our in-ear system 
and we yeah the guitar system again is all in Pelican cases so the wireless Sennheiser guitar system again is always the same the only thing you need to being attacked the only thing you then need to think ahead about is uh, frequency coordination so obviously our equipment is in certain bands and we go all over the world so sometimes um, things are not compatible uh, you have to find certain blocks of spectrum so you should always plan ahead for that for this trip I use Sennheiser Cipher, which is if you just go to um, Sennheiser.com forward slash Cipher, they actually have a tool on there that will tell you all the frequency ranges that you can use within all around the world. In India, there was um, there were certain blocks that looked okay, but I wasn't sure about other ones. And I actually reached out to uh, Suman Thakur in uh, Sennheiser, India and asked him for some local knowledge and he was like anything works um, there is no uh, legislation here or there's no frequency coordination as such so most equipment no matter what band you're in you should be able to find what you need so I've turned up today I've done a scan there's loads of spectrum for my equipment um, same with the guitars so there's no real issues here there's not a huge amount of wireless being used at the festival so I'm pretty confident with that um, we've, I've scanned, um, I've assigned everything and I've done a walk test for all the ARA and everything seems really good. Uh, I'll do that again before the show but I am uh, pretty confident that, that all that will work but again it's all about planning ahead so I prepped my console um, last week, I reached out and found out about the RF situation here last week so when I turn up you, you're prepared and you kind of know what you know what you're in for so any kind of festival situation the advance is critical you, if you turn up expecting your desk and you haven't advanced it or told them and you haven't brought one then you're on the house board and that's just the way it is if you're not bringing RF equipment um, you know, you need to spec what you need for your show, how many channels you need, if it's IEMs, if it's radio mics. So all that should be done on the advance way before you actually get here on the day and then everybody knows um, what it is that you'll be using um, and what the expectation level is for, from both sides. So here is the uh, monitor desk that I'll be using today. So as I said, I prepped all this back in the UK. So I literally plug in the key, press load, and there's my show now. And then it's just a matter of signing. So I'm all the way over here. This is all the racks. So these are all the racks that are supplying all the consoles that are being used today from the house and monitors. Mine is here. So it's just a case then of making sure that my outputs for my IEMs are in the right outputs and they're assigned on the console and all the input patch, which is all the instruments coming from stage and the vocal mics are all in the right place. So this is Simon Fuller, our tour manager. Hi Simon. Hi. Um, when I was talking about the advance before, Simon is actually the person who gets in touch with the festival and sorts everything out beforehand, don't you mate? Yeah. And it's all with been nicely surprised haven't we everything we've asked for we've, we've yeah. had it's been really well organized um so yeah it's good any little comments to make about it anything it's you happy? Not, not enough cake not enough cake no it's not enough cake and here is jamie hello you haven't seen before he's setting up our keyboard so we actually bring the keyboards with us these are just midi controlled um to the playback system the only thing we hire is the stand, Jamie, isn't it? That's true, yeah. How is the stand? It's all right, it could be better, but with a few cable ties it works, so yeah, it's good. So as mentioned before, uh, the only thing we really need to hire is a drum kit. So we've got the one we asked for, I think, or as close to. And then we bring all our mics, so all our Sennheiser mics, um, which we've done micing up videos before, if you want to click through the Sennheiser Pulse channel you'll see some other of our videos here showing how we mic up the drum kit 
But as you can see, we brought everything with us. Um, yeah, the vocal mics ready to go out on the front of the stage. So uh, we also bring these this little drape. So we've got a little bit of production, I suppose. So as we are, we are approaching, this is our playback rig. So our session musicians live in here, I guess. So again, as you can see this case, we can fly this on a plane. Everything we have is under 32 kilos and uh, just goes in the hold. Um, so as we saw Jamie plugging in those keyboards before, um, these are the inputs for the keys. And they're just MIDI controllers for the work that's actually done in the laptop. And then, um, I don't know where the patch is, but we have, these are all the outputs for everything that comes from this rack. So this rack looks after the bass guitar, um, all the keys and the playback. And if we go around the front, you can actually see the Kempers. So these are, this is the bass Kemper. Uh, and we have a backup as well. So there's a switch in there. So if one goes down or something doesn't work, we can switch to a, a redundant. Um, we can see, I mean, this is the stroke. So a headline in there obviously still using all the cabs and everything. A Kemper is a way of taking this and making it very small into here and it's all controlled by a laptop so you can dial in any sounds. Uh, also when we're playing along to track with click all the sounds get changed to whichever bass sound was used on the album and like I said it's in such a small case that we can just fly this all around the world and here we are on stage at Lola we can see Lollapalooza India the first one ever so we over in, over in Jamie's world, he's looking after guitars. Um, and again, once again, I just want to show you this. Is this the actual pelly? Oh, it's a different pelly case. Yeah. Oh, it's the one that's underneath. So as you can see, the way this is packaged, this goes in here, which is how we fly it around on a plane. So we've got two of those, obviously. And then Jamie just sets everything up on top so he can do his guitar work up here. It's very easy. It's very easy, isn't it? it very is. compact, mate, isn't it? Good. Then, Same with these, uh, are these Scott Dixon cases? Yeah, yeah, two of them, yeah. So these Scott Dixon cases, again, act as, they're just miniature guitar vaults. So again, you can fly these on planes, you just put the case on, and all your guitars are nice and strapped in, but then for the show, you've actually got a uh, guitar rack as well. So that's how we fly all the guitars around. And then down here, we have Jamie's, system which again is the two Kempers uh, that we saw on the other side of the stage so this is main guitar and again this is a redundant backup and then this runs into a switcher so he can just select which guitar is going to the Kemper and obviously all the guitars are wireless so we've got a Sennheiser EW500 system there um, so he can, he's got four guitars running and then he just selects which one he wants to run into the Kemper. Oh, pretty straightforward, isn't it, Jamie? It is, mate. It's been easy. Once it's set up. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos just like this.